Hey guys, before we get into the video, I want to talk about the PC Fun Anniversary Celebration. We've got some flash sales going on and 20% off anything over $89, 12% off anything over $49. That's going on right now through August 31st. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another one. Today we got a uh, we got a little bit of a special one today. Oop, hold on, audio might not be that great. All right, I'm hoping the audio is audio is a little bit better there. Today I got a package in the mail. Got a little package in the mail from Pete's Tackle, all the way from Montana. Pete's Tackle in Montana. He sent me this box. This is Pete's Pete's Tackle box right there. Uh, these are all, all hand-tied, uh, either marble jigs, some sort of jig and plastic combo, and then he has some underspins as well. So, Pete, thank you for this. I appreciate it. I will be trying out two different ones today. It's going to be first one. Is this going to be this? A little pink and white. So let's tie that on and get to, uh, get to fishing. All right, we're going to do a little simple loop knot here. Just like this, put that line through, pinch it together, and then it's simply just flip it over one time. It's all, it's all that's necessary. Put that jig back through that loop, wet it a little bit, pull her tight. And there's your loop knot. And we're gonna clip that excess tag end. I got pontoons everywhere. Pontoons everywhere. All right, let's get to fishing. A very small school. Here it comes. Got him. Crop number one. Ooh, fell right off. Crop number one on the Pete's tackle, though. I'm gonna have to find a different school. These guys are not big. There's one. No, these are not big. Let's find a different school. Find a different school. All right, well, we found a school. Definitely deeper than I wanted. Yeah, wait till that thing spins back. They're real tight to a brush pile. 19, 20 feet of water, sorry, right there. 19, 20 feet of water. Not really the depth I want to find them at, but you know, you take what you can get. We got water temps pushing 80 degrees, which for the, we're in central Wisconsin right now, or north, a little bit north Wisconsin. And uh, these water temps are fairly warm for the state of Wisconsin. I know a lot of you guys who fish in the southern states, 80 degrees is nothing. But uh, up here it's pretty warm, so these fish are looking for some cool water. In that 18, 19, 20 foot range. Drop this thing down there. See if we can catch one of these guys. I have to say that spot lock feature is absolutely amazing. I don't know how I fished without it. Well, that next brush pile, 30 feet ahead of me, is loaded too. Crop here stacked deep. Oh, there's one. Light bites today. Light bites. Crappie number three today. This guy's a dink. Let's push up a little bit. There's a brush pile with a ton more on them. Let's see if we can find some of those uh, 10, 11 inch fish. This lake has got a ton of cookie cutter 10 inchers which tastes great, but uh, they're not gonna be wall hangers, so, which is fine for today. Yep, there he was. Plucking them off from about 15 feet down. Oh no, threw my jig. Another Dinkleton. So the three colors you need to have in your tackle box, I really wasn't gonna talk about this in this video, but I figured what the heck, cause we're not gonna catch any giants here. The three colors that 
will work on any lake in the combination of these colors. White, pink, and chartreuse. As long as you have those three base colors and then a combination of something else along with those. Chartreuse, white, and pink. As long as you have those three, you can get a crappie to bite on pretty much any lake or river. And if you notice in Pete's tackle box, he's got quite a few of them in that color, that fit that color pattern. These crappie are deep for this time of year. This is like fall fishing. I'm right on this outside point. Well, let me see, I'll pull it up on the map. All right, I don't know if you can see this, but there's this outside point. Here's a sharp break line. This is all rock coming out here, a little off. Oh, hold on, I got a fish on. It's a little off there. But at 20, can you guys see this? No, you can't. Hold on. Let's catch this fish first. This keeps thumping it, and then we'll talk about it. Don't need live scope for this. It's just gonna be a little thump. There, right there. Just a little thump. Cookie cutters. Bunch of cookie cutters. All right, let me grab the big camera here because this is, I feel like this, could, this is probably important for you guys. All right, so here we go. This out here, this is a spawning bay. See that green area to my right? I highlighted that for less than, I believe that's less than eight feet. There's a big spawning flat off to my right here. There's this point that comes out, underwater point that comes off like this, and they drop brush piles on the end of this point. Normally, during the fall season, this is where a lot of times they'll stack up. But I think because the water temps are so warm, and again, 80 degrees for Wisconsin, Minnesota, that's pretty darn warm. Uh, we usually don't get that 85. I know a lot of states get that 85 to 90 plus degrees for water temp. We don't get that, that warm temp up here. At least it doesn't hold there for very long. So these crappie aren't used to that warm water, so they're going to tuck down a little bit deeper, and that's where I've been finding them. They're really not, I mean, this is the best school I can find. The other schools have really not been schooled up too tight, but this is actually a pretty good school on the, uh, on the panoptics here. As soon as that... Yeah, there they are. Yeah, they're right there. Schooled up pretty darn tight. So, but that's where I'm finding them, this deeper outer edge that normally I wouldn't find them until fall. Usually like sep late September, October, and those water temps start to plummet. This is where I'm gonna start to find them before mid-October, they're gonna push off a little bit deeper to that hard to soft bottom transition. But uh, they're here, so got a fish for them. All right, let's see if we can see how many we can catch off this this little pile here. I respect all you guys that hand tie your stuff, like hand tied hackle jigs and hair jigs and stuff like this. Man, I got a lot of respect for you guys that do that. It takes a lot of time and effort. I know. I've attempted it. I'm not going to make a video on it because it did not turn out very good. But all right, now we're rolling on that one. Gotta make sure I'm recording on all of them. Rookie on YouTube here. Dump. Yup. You know, sometimes just sitting up on these brush piles, even though these fish aren't that big, I mean, these are a bunch of nine, 10 inch cookie cutters. Still a ton of fun to catch. Ton of fun to catch. No minnows, no plastics, just a simple hackle jig. I'm actually gonna tie on a couple different ones, see what we can get to bite. They could be super hungry and just biting everything right now. Oh, there he is. That's a little bit better one. He's a little fatter one. What are you, buddy? Ten and a half. I know, they're not monstrous, but still a ton of fun to catch, one after another. See you, big guy.
I'm gonna try to catch one more on this thing and then we'll, we'll change it up, see what else he's got in that tackle box. All right, let's see what else he's got in this tackle box. Should we go with an underspin? What else, what else he got on this side? Some more hair jigs, hackle jigs. Let's go with an underspin. A little bit bigger, what do you think in? See what he's got here? Black and chartreuse, purple and pink, orange and chartreuse. I don't know what color that is. Some sort of light green, pink, green and pink, pink, some sort of lime green. Like the pink, white, and chartreuse are just kind of those base colors that they work everywhere. So as long as you have those in your tackle box, you should be set. Okay, definitely different situations uh, call for different things. Like you might need a little gold and orange thing here. It's pretty much the only one that you got different. It's a gold and orange setup. But uh, for the most part, those three, those three colors, they'll do it for you. Put this guy back and then I'm gonna tie on that underspin. Pretty cool little jig there. That definitely has its purpose. But let's go with black and chartreuse is just it's such a good one up north, especially up north. I mean, black and chartreuse and red and chartreuse. Those are uh, two color patterns that work very well up north. Simple loop knot. Just take your tag end, put it through the eyelid like that, fold it over, pinch it together with both fingers, both your uh, left hand index and thumb and right hand index and thumb or right hand index and middle finger. Give it one little flip, creates a little loop like that. Put that jig head right through that loop. A lot more gracefully than what I'm doing right now. There you go. Bring that loop all the way over, like that. Wet her a little bit, cinch her down. Not too tight, just enough. We're not hauling in, you know, six pound bass or something. Just There you go, just like that. Snip the tag end. You can even leave that. A lot of people say that's too much tag end. Dude, if they're not seeing this entire line coming down in 20 feet of water or 15 feet, they're not gonna see a half inch of tag end not clipped off like that, so get this guy down there and catch some more. Come on, buddy. There he is. There he is. And when you're fishing deeper water, and this probably happens mostly to us northern guys, well, we got to fish that super deep water sometimes because we have clearer water. It's usually how it works. If you got really muddy water, you usually don't have to go that deep uh, because that sunlight doesn't penetrate the water column that much and warm. It stays cooler, shallower. So, um, but when you are fishing this deeper water, holding that 10 or 11 or 12 footer, really not necessary. You're not going to scare these fish. So I go with the eight footer. It's a simple uh, eight foot ACC. It's a great hybrid for casting smaller jigs, vertically jigging like I'm doing right now, and then slip bobber setups. There's one. There's one. One after another. Man, this is fun. They're not, they're not big, but they're fun. Fun to catch. You guys going for crappie? What's that? You guys going for crappie? You can come on over. There's a ton of them right here. Are they all, yeah. Are they all up right there well, the yeah. You can come on over. I'll give it to them. All right. Gave those kids a honey hole there. It's more important they catch them than me catching them. Besides, there's a there's a few different spots we can catch them here, like right here. Bam. It's not a ton of them, but uh, there are, there's some fish. They're not big. <laughs> Dang, they're not big. But uh, it's more important those kids have a ton of fun catching a bunch of fish than me. I know how to catch a fish. Some days, some days. They're tapping it, but they're not biting it like the pink jig. Let's tie that on, quit wasting time. Mm, this is the one we had on. By the way, these are the cases. These little cases, these work great for your hair jigs, as you can see. These are actually 
mostly made for ice fishing jigs or uh, fly box uh, for, for fly fishing, but they were great for your hair jigs or even just your smaller jigs. If you're, mm, I'd say 16th or less. There's one, there we go. All right, switched it right up to the uh, white and pink. They started biting a little harder. harder. The uh, black and chartreuse really wasn't doing the trick. I hope those kids are just hammering them because they were, <laughs> there was probably a good thousand plus crappie between those 10 brush piles that are down there. See another boat moved in on them. 80 degree water temps, got to push them deep. This is a natural lake too, so there isn't really a ton of current moving through. If this was a current, or if this was a, some sort of river system, there's one. They would stack up on the edge of the currents and you could probably find them in 10 to 12 feet of water. Fished a, fished a river system last week, two weeks ago. And that's where we found them, kind of on the bridge pilings. In about 10, 12 feet of water. A lot of current moving through that system and pushing oxygen cooler water, and of course bait. But on these lakes, there's not a ton of current on these natural lakes that we have up north. So in order to find some cooler water, they gotta go deep. I wouldn't be surprised during a cold front if they push back, because we have brush piles, especially on this little shoreline here, there's brush piles in like 10, 12 feet of water. There's one. Slam the hook on him. I better keep that players out. Because now they're starting to hit it right on the drop. They're starting to fly up that water column and smoke it right on the drop. They're choking it down. There you go. Well, turns out that white and pink is the money color. I will leave a link to Pete's tackle in the video description. You guys can check that out. I'll, I'll leave a link to the entire setup I'm using here. This is a PC Fun Honor XT 1000 size reel. When you're jigging, 500 size or 1000 size are perfect. A lot of people like the 500 size reels, they're smaller. A lot, a lot less lightweight. A lot less weight making them lightweight. That makes sense. I should probably say that again. They're a lot less weight. Ooh, there was a tap. There's another tap. Set the hook, Davis. Let's go. Yep. White and pink is the color of the day. Check out Pete's Tackle with Pete's Tackle Box. There you go. Pete's Tackle Box. Go ahead, catch you some crappie. See you, buddy.